Hello and welcome to a very, very important video concerning Vivid Table. But we're going to be talking about tables to start with. And uh, I'm going to give the credits as usual. Most of my file, I'm downloading them from uh, uh, Easy Excel or ExcelEasy.com. Excel uh, uh, dash easy.com. So this is very important for us to give credits when the credits is due. So you notice that all my files, in order to make it much easier to record this video so I don't have to reinvent the wheel. And as you notice, I'm going to click on the pivot table and I'm going to open this for the purpose of demonstrating how to use the pivot table based on this file that I'm just going to go ahead and open it for you guys. All right, uh, it's going to take a second or two, and of course I had, uh, uh, we already have a pivot table. I'm going to enable editing, and I'm going to go ahead and delete everything basically here, so it could start fresh. Of course, the most important part of it is I cleared everything just to go to sheet one. I'm going to rename it pivot table uh, for now. Of course, it's not yet pivot table, but it will be in a second. Uh, notice here we have. Uh, I'm going to also create uh, a larger view uh, by having 200%. We have an order ID. This is really uh, just for identification purpose. Uh, it has nothing to do with the data as much as to tell you which order was taken, just like you using your social security for the purpose of identifying you or your student's ID or your employee ID. Uh, uh, this is actually where the juice is in the products category, amount of money that in the date and the country that have uh, uh, consumed those type of vegetables and fruit. So we have products, we have category, and we have amount and date. So uh, for us, be, before we actually do anything with the table here, it's not even yet a table, sorry, it's a range. Uh, I want to see how many how many rows I have. Uh, you always have the number of the rows, excluding, of course, the the header, which you must have in order to identify what each column stands for. If I press Control, uh, now I'm pressing on Control, the down arrow. It's going to take me all the way to the last row. So I do have actually 213 row, which means I have 212 uh, actual data row, and I could go ahead and click on the control up arrow. It will take me all the way to uh, the top cell in that column here, which is order ID. Of course, I always could press control uh, home. It will take me to A1. So let's go ahead and see how we're going to use pivot table. But as I said, I need to explain how to convert table one more time. I, In order for me to create the table, uh, I must first of all check there is no data whatsoever here on the right column of the data. So if I press control down arrow, it should be taking me all the way to the last column, which is a little bit over a million. Here we go. Actually, this is not a million. It's 65,536 because it's a good thing to this mention. This is really using the older uh, uh, Excel format before 2007 where we had only 16 bit, which is 65,536. Of course, if I resave that file uh, one more time as a uh, computer, uh, here we go, one second here, save as. See here, it says 97.3.2003. If I save it as an actual uh, cell here, 2007 and more, uh, it's going to really adjust itself to over a million. Okay, this is, uh, the idea here is to close it and refresh it, of course. The idea is to go ahead and not worry about it at this moment because my ultimate goal is to go ahead and demonstrate for you, whether you're going all the way to 65,000 or 1 million, it doesn't matter knowing that we don't have any data here. The same thing if I go all the way to the end, uh, I need to make sure that the last row doesn't have any data here as well. So if I do have data here, it's going to confuse things uh, very easily. So as long as we have a clean data, a clean data, uh, we are ready to go ahead and convert it into a table. You click anywhere in the range and either click Control T, which I uh, could do that, and say, okay, do you want to go ahead and convert this? Now you see the marshing ant around the data, and it also my table has header must be checked 
please make sure that you check it. That's one way of doing it. I'm going to go ahead and cancel it. And the other way of doing it is to go ahead and say insert a table. You're not inserting a table. Basically, you are creating a table. And it's going to give you the same exact thing like you're pressing Control T. And I'm going to go ahead and accept this time that this is exactly what I want. And with table, you have a whole new world opened for you. You have a ribbon associated with the data. For example, uh, you could go ahead and see the total rows. So it takes you all the way to the total row. So you could deal with so many different features that were not available for you as a range. Uh, the other thing that you could have, uh, of course, always use the control up bar to take me all the way up. You could change the color of the uh, immediately. Just click it anywhere. It's going to impact that. Of course, we always have the light color. We have the medium color and we have the dark color. You know, you could do whatever one pleases you. Of course, uh, this is part of it. You have also the banded rows. You have the header rows. You wanted to create the first column as, uh, look here, it's bolded. You wanted to do also the last column as bolded. If you want to emphasize this, banded columns, you know, you could go ahead and change the color. I mean, that's maybe too overwhelming, but it's there if you wish to have it. All right, so what I did not mention, which is extremely critical for us to know, when we created the table, it gave us a name of the table, as you notice here, and now it's called table one, which you don't have to stick with it. For example, I could call it uh, my table, or I could call it, uh, uh, you know, veggie, because I'm talking about a vegetable here, and fruit, and V-E-G and F-R-E, or if I uh you okay so at least i know this is my table now and notice here if i clicked enter and i go to the uh formula and i go to the name now it's really veg uh, veggie fruit and this is now the name of the table because you might end up with having who knows how many tables you could possibly have and if you ended up having so many tables you will be able to uh, name them accordingly so i don't want to really lose track of the many uh, names that you might have so this is basically now a table i could go ahead and click on the ribbon here it's the design i could take the last column first column i want it to every uh, piece of data to look uh, the same and notice with the table, we're not talking yet about the pivot table. We can go ahead a lot of tasks that we could apply. For example, in the category, obviously, I have selected all. I have fruit and vegetable. I could and check the uh, vegetable, and everything is going to be fruit. So here we go. So you could see that we have a lot more fruit than we have vegetable because we have 212 of them. And this is shows the little funnel here. It means that's been applied to be a uh, filter already. The same thing with the amount, which is going to give you uh, kind of mathematical calculation. Uh, if I wanted to say here, anything that is greater than or equal to uh, 5,000. Here we go. And we all know about the and. And is going to restrict the boundary, the upper boundary. So it's a range. If I say and uh, greater than, uh, it says greater than or equal to 5,000 and less than, of course, or equal to, less than is less than or equal to, to 8,000. So it's going to give me uh, the range between 5,000 and 800. Watch when we're talking about or, or is inclusive. So or is going to probably use when you want it to have more things. For example, if you wanted to have all the data that is greater than a certain number and maybe less than a certain number, you know, you cannot really use OR to have, uh, you know, a range because with OR, if you had a range greater than and less than, uh, it's going to give you everything. So just watch how AND and OR works. So um, obviously, you know how to use it. So in this case, we notice that all the amount is going to be, to be uh, basically uh, between the 5,000 and, or greater than or equal to 5,000 and less than or equal to uh, uh, 8,000. Uh, the same thing if I wanted to exclude uh, the country here, uh, just leave the United States. You know, I just wanted to see what are actually the amount based on the criteria 5,000 to 8,000 only fruit and I wanted to have all the United States that is another filter if I wanted to only concentrate on Apple of all the thing you know then you will see there is only two entry for Apple 
uh, with the order ID 37194 with this amount and those are the dates and of course United States so sometimes you don't need to really use pivot table if you have a very simple task that you wanted to filter directly through the table you will be done in second but that's not the case because most of the table that we will be using require of that size require some heavy uh, examination analysis and we're going to really do that I think it's a good idea to stop here uh, and I'm going to continue with a full full videos that concerning with vivid table and nothing but vivid table at least we know how to convert a range into an actual table by using control T or going select anywhere in the table and make sure that you have no spaces blank rows or blank columns in the middle or of course no data toward the end the last column and there is no data at the end of the rows once you know make sure that your environment is clean go ahead and convert it into a table by pressing Control T or go to insert while you're selecting the range and say insert table you're not inserting table you're converting the table uh, the range into an actual table thank you very much for watching uh, this video and now we are actually ready to become a decision maker and here is Dr. Hijazi wishing you the best of luck learning Excel happy learning